We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive, uh, cleaning up the mess here, but we're doing something pretty great next week. Uh, we're going to be doing a cup of Super Bowl. It is Crab Cake Row. We don't do Radio Row around here anymore. We're like Alanis Morissette, uninvited, but we are very invited and inviting everybody to come out and participate and help us with the Maryland Food Bank next week as we do a cup of Super Bowl. It is our initial turn at eight hours a day of live marathon radio beginning on Monday at Fadley's Election to Market. Tuesday will be a Costas. I'm wearing my Costas shirt. Be in Dundalk. Wednesday will be a Cocos. Thursday, uh, we will be out at State Fair in Catonsville. And then on Friday, up at Pappas in uh, Cockeysville. Great Maryland crab soup. Great cream of crab soup. You can go 50-50. All the things that they don't feed Billick out in Columbus, Ohio. Right. And up in uh, the Sturgeon you're pulling out of the Northern Bay in Minnesota, wherever your golf course is. Um, we had Coach Billick on last week. Of course, our partner on behalf of the Living Classrooms Foundation. I just learned that James Bond is going to be coming out on Monday uh, to join us at uh, uh, at the first stop at Fadley's to talk about Living Classrooms Foundation. So it'll be great to catch up with him and all the things he does, which I know you're interested in, but you're interested in football. I mean, you got 49ers roots, and I know how much you love San Francisco. You got Ravens roots. And all I could think about was games guys like you lost and, as opposed to the ones you won. You won the Super Bowl, you show the ring off. Every other time you did this, there was hurt feelings involved for all of you who – Won Super Bowls, but somehow lost a whole bunch of other big games like this, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 painful, I, particularly when it reminded me of uh, when I was in Minnesota in the 98 team when we were just a cod lock to go. You know, we were going to go to the Super Bowl. And or at home, a uh, championship game, hadn't had one in Minnesota for years and years and years, and Atlanta came in and, you know, we lost. And, and, and it that lingers because of the expectation. And I know like everybody, I, I, I thought it was a slam dunk. I thought Baltimore at home, uh, they played well enough to win except for the turnovers the mistakes. And that's against a good team like uh, Patrick Mahomes and Kansas city chiefs. That's going to get you beat. And that one, that one stinks. It's going to, it's going to ride for a while with them. Coach, I know you've been around us a long time on every end of all of these things and different divisions and different roles and all that. I come at it as a, as a fan, right? I was at the Ghost of the Post game as a young boy, leaving that game after Casper, right? Uh, I was at the drive game in Cleveland, the first AFC champ as a fan. Ernie, of course, he got me a ticket down the right field line. I was on the 50-yard line sitting alone. I went with Phil Jackman. I walked out of that stadium that day as a 17-year-old guy. We lost our football team here. You could hear a pin drop. Man, your game in Minnesota, I, I didn't leave the stadium with the fans. I was in your locker room. It was the day I met you. And I I, I thought of you, and I knew I had you booked today after this. And I, I really – I know you well, man. We were partners. I, I love you. And I don't think I talk to you much about that. And when I bring it up, it's Joshy Josh. And, hey, it was the day we met, and I waited for you. And it wasn't it wonderful. My God, that was just as – I was as an ugly as scene as I've ever seen, and you were a part of it. And I'm friends with you long enough to know I don't bring it up much with you. Uh, but today's the day to bring it up and say, how much do you think about that? The, because you, well, you see the ring, you know what I mean? Everybody knows the glory, but boy, that was a rough day. 25, almost 25, 26 years ago. And I still, I don't go a month that that doesn't, isn't brought up anytime anybody's talking football, particularly if I'm in Minnesota or you know, whatever uh, it, 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 because that team, a little like Baltimore was such a, you know, Garrett, it's you know, that offense and everything we're doing, they, they're going for Super Bowl. It's one thing to to think, Oh God, could, could we go and we'll, we'll play and we'll win and we'll go to the Super Bowl. But for it to be a foregone conclusion, a little like, I think uh, with, with Baltimore this year, um, because they were playing so well and they had everything in order um, it it stings that much more, and it's hard for the fans. It's hard for the players and the organization because of the expectation. Um, and it, great game, um, and obviously against a great opponent. Um, I, I think Baltimore is a better team, uh, but clearly it shows at the end of the day, as it always has been, big plays, turnovers, and penalties. That that's at the end of the. Day. It's like there's a great saying in the profession. It's not the best team. The wins. It's the team that plays best that wins, and that's what happened. Uh, I don't know if the best team won, but the team that played best and made the fewest mistakes won the game. 
I saw you lose games, saw you win games, uh, big games, small games, awful games. I, I had Matt Stover on talking about missing the kick in Miami so far mm-hmm. today, and I had Dwan Edwards on already today talking about 2006 and the expectation. You guys were 15-1 and one in Minnesota. I hate to be bringing up all the awful days, but the this 06 game as well – um, that was my darkest sort of day as a Raven fan because of the expectation level and where you were with McNair and how well the team had played and the pedigree of the defense and the fact that you had done it before and Ray and a lot of those guys had done it before. I, I, I just think the the expectation when you're 15 and one there, <laughs> you, you better win, uh, you know, like and then that sits with you. And I think of this team and the opportunities of where they were on Sunday at home. Having Patrick Mahomes on the road, avoiding Josh Allen and Burrow and all the rest of those quarterbacks, almost full health, uh, Marlon Humphrey maybe aside, other teams missing their spy linebacker against Lamar. They're missing their all-pro guard. I mean, just every part of it felt like this is something they're really going to regret for a long time because this is really hard to get this game back here ever again, right? It is because it's everybody – people always ask, you know, is, is how hard talk about how hard it is to repeat as a Super Bowl champ after you win it in the next year. And I always remind, no, it's hard to win a Super Bowl, period. All the things that have to line up and stack up in order for you to walk off that field with that trophy in a single year, let alone back to back. And then we'll be talking about that ad infinitum with Kansas City and this year and the whole nine yards. Um along the same thing and, and i always say no it's 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 hard in terms of what has to happen and things align for baltimore to put them in this position uh it doesn't mean it's not going to happen again and i'm sure they'll take well we'll come back we'll be better um but they also know that all the things that have to happen for that for that to be you know a lot of it's fate and a lot of it just it is what it is and that's why it's a missed opportunity when you get so close and it's right there. You can taste it and it doesn't happen. Like I said, that 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 stings and lingers with you for a while. I say I've known you 25 years. I don't know how many crosswords we've had, maybe one or two or a handful somewhere along the way. I don't remember many of them, but I remember vividly the game in Detroit at Ford Field. When the flags were thrown and Bart Scott and Terrell, I mean, everybody kind of lost their mind after that. There's one time after the game that. You looked at me like you were going to kill me and you waved me off and you're like, not today. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, you were, and, and I think you were as frustrated by the behavior of your players oh, and sure. your accountability in that and composure. Coach, I, I thought about this during the game. I thought this is, they've lost their composure. Roquan Smith's popping guys, Clowney's popping guys. I mean, clotheslining the, 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 the MVP, not the MVP this year, but the best player in the sport in Mahomes, the way they did. I, I, there, there were just so many things that were out of character that were composure oriented that really fall on John's desk, whether he wants it to or not. Yeah. It's, it's not, that's not fair, but it, that's true. I mean, it's it, 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 as the head coach, just like in Detroit, it, that's the players and the emotion, everything spun out of control. And and I don't know what you could do to get it back other than take all those guys off the field, which is, I mean, okay, you're going to take Roquan Smith off the field. You're going to take Zay Flowers off the field after he stands up over that guy and 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 does what he does. Um, you, you can't. So as a coach, it's tough because you it, the team spins out of control and, and you saw it again. It's the same thing. Um, you try to address it. You try to, make it a teaching moment with the guys, you know, going guys and now isn't the time, but there will be going are losing our composure. This is what it cost us. We got to learn from that because we're going to be in that position again at some point. And, and we've got to collectively and individually learn that that's a tough lesson to learn uh, and the accountability for it, because you know, the players will look at it from the standpoint of, well, you know, it's it's the passion for the game. They'll try to excuse it as passion for the game. And they'll also, well, it was just me, just one time. Yeah, but you have five, six guys that it happens one time and it spins out of control. And, and that's the result in the most, you know, highlighted of situations. So, yeah, that is a tough one for the, for the coach and the coaching staff and the organization. And the players have to address. They first have to recognize as we had to after that Detroit game, that 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 then take the count. Yes, that's what happened. We lost control. Can't excuse it. Can't blame it on the officials or on the moment. 
or excuse it by the passion of the game, we lost control. You have to recognize that if you're going to learn from it. You know, Matt Stover came on earlier today. I've had all your former players on. Um, and, and Matt mentioned that at one point, Bill Belichick, when he was a Brown, before the Ravens came, coached the defense to piss off Orlando Brown so he would take punches at them in practice so that in the game it wouldn't happen. Right. It happened to you. It happened late in his career. I love Zeus, whatever. He had a reputation for kick him in the shins, bite him at the bottom of the pile. He'll punch you back. You'll get 15 yards. It happened with the season on the line. I don't need to tell you. I was there. It was a long time ago. I had a feeling, and you can speak to this a little bit because you know Andy real well. And Steve Spagnolo and Dave Tobe know John real well. John's a little more fiery than you. I, I know both of you well. You are much more calm than John. John's more hot-headed and certainly was. It was younger and all that. I, I think there was a point where they told Travis Kelsey, throw that stuff on uh, Justin Tucker down there when he's mouth off. Get get have Arthur Millette throwing punches that lead the broadcast. Literally, I covered hockey for a long time, coach. Right. I remember the old hockey skates and we're going to yell and we're going to scream. We're going to mouth off and we're going to see who gets the extra two minutes for the shove in the face. And we're going to score the power play goal. I don't think about the football mind game in that way because it's so hard to begin with to keep your focus. There's so many things going on in any given play that everybody has a responsibility um, that a calm mind. But hearing Tony Romo talk about Lamar Jackson trying to calm his mind on the bench and having a quarterback that pounds the ground like I don't see any other quarterback doing that in the Pop Warner sort of way. It's Lamar's way. It's his expression. But I don't know that the Chiefs didn't coach this this week to say – Let's do the Orlando well, Brown model of getting under somebody's skin and getting Roquan Smith off his game, getting these guys off their game, because that's how we're going to win. Kelsey clearly was an agitator. It, you know, it reminded me of hockey. That, you really did. And that's his game. You have to. And they came in the underdog chip on their shoulder because everybody was disrespecting them, you know. Um, and they know that Baltimore, because of the nature of the team has been for years and years and years that, you know, physical uh, you know, play like a Raven, uh, that mentality that you have, uh, confident um, that, oh, absolutely. I can't imagine there weren't pushing of buttons to saying, okay, which of these guys can we get to, to, uh, to bend to the pressure? Uh, and, and sure, and that's just gamesmanship. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's just, that's all part of it. Um, because the Ravens play that game a lot. You know, have been bullies, started. right? Literally, the bullies. Yeah, you made a movie about your team. Just, you know, a competitive nature that says uh, uh, we think we're good, and we're going to make sure you know we think we're good, and 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 see if I can get you to lose your composure because we won't. Uh, and the most part, we didn't. Uh, but when you do, and it goes the other way, then then you can see it. So, but you know, that's that's all part of the game, and you know, all this it, where where they are right now, it's regroup, go at it next year. You know you've got a good team. You've proven that. I don't know what their cap situation is and whatever and what what, ha what changes have to be made in the offseason, uh, as every team has to deal with. Uh, but knowing that, you know what, we're, if we're lucky, we're going to be right back here doing the exact same thing, either Mahomes or with Josh Allen or with C.J. Stroud or if any one of these great young quarterbacks is Burrow, a healthy Burrow, you know, maybe yeah, deal with his brother now with uh, Justin Herbert out in L.A., right? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Exactly right. Um, and that, you know, so, yeah, you, 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 you're, you're going to be here again. So what are, what are we going to learn from? And, and the hard part is, is it's one of those things that's a little like. Because like the conversation about Lamar. Can he win the big game? And well, it was great that they won the playoff game against Houston, but that's not over. That that's going to pick right back up, and it's going. And they know that, and Lamar knows that until he wins the big game, and that's fair. That's the way it's going to be. You have no control of that. So, and and the hard part is, you're going to carry that all year long, because it doesn't matter what you do during the regular season, it doesn't address the well. You can't win the big one until you win the big one. So that's that's the emotional baggage you kind of carry along um, until you get that opportunity to, to rewrite the, the, the record book. And uh, that's, that's going to be the challenge for Lamar and the organization. It's hard to beat the best quarterback. I mean, I don't know how many weeks you rolled the Amazing. ball out there 
maybe in Minnesota, you had the best quarterback a lot of the weeks. Around here, you didn't every week. I mean, against, uh, you know, certain weeks you did when you're playing Spurgeon Win or somebody like that. But when you come in with Mahomes and you don't care who you're playing and you have the best quarterback or you have that guy, I don't know that we perceive Lamar to be that guy or that he's shown that he's that guy. He's a two-time MVP uh but if you gave me one of the two quarterbacks on Sunday, much like when you got beat with McNair, Manny was the best quarterback in the sport. So you, you sort of tip your cap to some. But that guy always wins. The best quarterback always seems to win in your sport. You know, and I'm I'm be going out to Vegas and doing the whole thing and analyzing, OK, how's this matchup? And it's going to be a great matchup. And San Francisco, there's so many different things that San Francisco can do that this ought to be a great matchup. And you can look at their ability to run the ball and the defense and get pressure with a four man line and play zone behind, do all the things you got to do to beat Kansas City. And they're there. And you can go round and round with it. And it's all legitimate. But at the end of the day, it's, but they got Patrick Mahomes. At, at the end of the, and you can't quantify it. It's just, he's special. You can't quantify it. You're not going to stop it. It's like, you know, the 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 Jordan of the day. Well, all we can hope to do is contain him, try to keep up with him. Um, and, and the Ravens defense, to a large degree, did a great job. I thought, I think I said it last week, that if we were going to sit here and talk about a Kansas City win, it was going to, obviously, it was going to be a Patrick Mahomes, and it was going to be the ability of Pacheco and for them to run the ball uncharacteristic against a Ravens defense. And that it's that combination was going to, if indeed they were going to lose, it was going to be that. Well, the Ravens held up. They didn't, they tried, they kept going and they had some good runs, but for the most part, they handled the Pacheco running game, which is the personality of that team separate of Mahomes right now. Um, I also told you what's the one thing that John had to tell the coordinator. I don't care if we lose. I don't care if it's 100 or nothing. Don't let Kelsey catch a pass, right? For him to go off the way he did was – and, and the Ravens have some great personnel to match up. Like I said, Hamilton's just a phenomenal player. Um, but you try to go one-on-one -on -one or you try to go just zone, you lose. Kelsey's going to have the kind of day he does. And that's going to be the challenge for San Francisco now. You know, what do you do to take Travis Kelsey out of the game? Because if you don't, he's going to have, what do you have, 11 catches, 12 catches, set a NFL record or something. And and the hard part is if you don't, and once it starts into the game, then the player's going, okay, obviously we don't have a plan to stop this guy. And they eventually blame the coaches. Right, which is fair or not fair. You had a plan. Think you have the personnel. You got to change it up. But when he starts going off, and particularly in the critical third downs, when you know, you know where Patrick Mahomes is going, and and to not stop it, that's going to be the challenge for San Francisco right now. Particularly on third down, I don't care if you have to put nine guys on Kelsey. You got to you got to do something to take Kelsey out, or Patrick Mahomes is going to find it, and that's going to be the challenge for San Francisco. Been going on a long time, head coach Brian Billick, our head coach on behalf of Living Classrooms Foundation. He's headed to the real Super Bowl. We're going to be having a cup of Super Bowl uh, next week. Uh, Yours will be more fun. I, I'd rather come out and spend time with uh, your cup of Super Bowl. You know what? We can make we can arrange that in the future because uh, we're going to be doing that. Uh, this, this is a, this is in our this will be our first rodeo, but not our last rodeo. We're doing this, but um, I guess last thing for you, and because you'll be talking about this all next week as well, um, Andy relationship with him, knowing this Chiefs team, knowing where Brock Purdy is. I find it very hard to like the 49ers, even though they came back on Detroit, and we can talk about the pain of the Lions, but the 49ers have really. They've been a scuffling team here the last couple of weeks, and they're in the Super Bowl. Shocking what Detroit did in that first half. Now, they regrouped, okay, both offensively and defensively. Um, and, and you know, again, the criticism, well, you didn't stay with the running game like Baltimore. People say, oh, they didn't stay with the running game. They didn't have a chance. Uh, Kansas City chewed up that clock in the first half. So they didn't have a chance to stay with the running game. Um, and by that time, now you got to start throwing around and try to catch up. So uh, against the defense that was obviously outstanding and very opportunistic. 
San Francisco is going to be the same way. San Francisco has all the elements to beat Kansas City. They really do. But but you got to do it. And and they did almost did it the last time. I remember the last time these two teams played. I said that Kyle Shanahan would sell his soul to the devil if you could promise him just give me a chance in a one score game with us having the ball last which means Patrick Mahomes doesn't have it because that's a losing proposition and they had that but they couldn't they couldn't close it out right and they ended up giving the ball back to Mahomes and the, the rest is history uh, so San Francisco is capable of their game plan just what we saw in reverse chew up the clock put Patrick Mahomes in a tight situation because he doesn't have as many series, run the ball, make the big plays down the field that they're capable of, put a four or five man rush, keeping Mahomes in the pocket, which you saw Kansas City do very, very effectively to Lamar for the most part, and try to play matchup zones in behind it. If you got to play some man, um, that you're going to match up well with that, but you better put two on Kelsey. So they're, they're, they have the personnel to put the kind of game plan together that can beat Kansas City. Now, will they? Can they? And at the end of the day, does Patrick Mahomes do his typical special things that makes the difference? So it, it, it is a good matchup. And it's one that I, again, I, but I can't, I can't get past. Yeah, but they got 15. So I got to go with, I got to go with 15 and, and Kansas City in the game. I know it's hard for you to be sort of pushed out of the game and doing television and you thought you might coach again. You never really coached again, except Arizona State and going back later on. Um, Belichick and Pete Carroll at this point being Marvin would always say, we don't get smarter. We don't get dumber. We get smarter as coaches. You know, you, you learn All more. Sudden, yeah. and, Mar and, and Marvin's exactly back right. in the game, right? It, you know, go, going to, to Vegas with Antonio Pierce. The fact that Belichick and Pete Carroll, that, that they might not find seats or certainly Belichick might not find a seat because it appears he wants one right away. Pete might not want one, but the, the youth movement of oh gosh, Mike yeah. McDonald being the hot coordinator um, and Ben Johnson being the hot coordinator. You were that guy and worked out for you, but you know, five out of six of these guys, they'll be looking for another coordinator job. Exactly. Three, four years right. now. It's tough. Well, there's no question. No matter what you choose, you know, it's the same formula you always tend to hire the opposite of what you just fired. And, and there's always the trend, you know, it's the college guy or it's the former pro head coach or it's the pro coordinator or it's that, you know, and you, and, and that gets hot for a little bit, but no matter which direction you go, four out of five are going to lose, get fired at the end of the day, just because that's, it's a tough job and there's no one set formula right now. We're clearly in the young guy, you know, particularly if you've had lunch with Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan, you're getting a head job in the NFL. Um, that's that's the that's what they're looking for right now. Um, and and so that's the cycle we'll go through. So it's yeah, also a whole lot more inexpensive than trying to get Bill Belichick. You're building in one hundred fifty oh, sure. million dollars. Right. Sure. And the fact that with Belichick, you can you can I, I can just see the. I think we joked about it last week with Belichick with that. Atlanta job. And I know a little about the Atlanta job because of Mike Smith and Arthur Blank and Rich McKay. And, you know, have some perspective on that with Mike being the head coach. You, that, that was never going to happen because Belichick and, 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 and if nothing, Belichick won't be completely honest. Well, he, you know, I can see that conversation didn't go well going, you two got to get out of the building. Okay. You got to, you got to clear this building out and I'm going to redo the whole thing. If you want me here, that's what you got to do. And, and they're going, Whoa, you know, and that and that's not necessarily a bad thing because he's done a great job with that and shown that he can win with it. But yeah, I don't know too many owners, and particularly general. And this is a general manager's league now. And how, how, what general manager is going to bring in Bill Belichick unless it's one of his guys? And even if it is one of his guys, he's going. Ah, I know what's going to happen here. If we bring him in. Yeah, this is going to be a partnership up until the point the first time Bill wants to do something and I don't, and then and then we're going to know how that partnership really works. So, um, yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting to see. Pete's a different cat in that regard. But both those guys, what, 72, 73 years old. It's hard for me because I can't imagine. I, I can't. I can't imagine the grind. I can't imagine. Uh, I, and, and even wanting to do it. Um, 
But, when did you stop but, wanting to do it? You know, I got to hang around it because of the media thing for a while. It wasn't a matter of not wanting to do it. It was more a matter of realizing this isn't going to work. I could say I want to do it. Certainly would like to have the money. Uh, but at the end of the day, my heart and soul wouldn't be in it the way I knew. I knew what it was before. Okay. And, and I knew what my life was about and how 24, seven, 365 days a year, that's got to be it. And you love your wife and your daughters and your own personal right. sanity, you know, and, and, and now golf, you know, and that's, that's why I never played golf. I, they always said, you can, you can have a good career. You can be a good father and husband, and you can be a good golfer. You can maybe do two out of the three, but you got to choose which two. Um, but I just, I, 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 I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to sustain the passion that I used to have for the game. But now, and, and could those guys, or are they just convinced themselves that they are? I, I don't, I don't know. Bill Belichick doesn't know anything else. Well, I was going to say, once you don't know anything else, it's like me doing this. Like, I don't know what else in the world I would do. I really don't. I've been doing it 32 years. I don't know anything yeah. else. Yeah. And, and for Pete Carroll and Pete's a pretty eclectic guy. And, you know, once you do get out, you realize this is okay. I have other interests. I can, I can enjoy this. And you know what? I don't care how poorly I putt or how badly I play. No one's trying to run me out of town. So life's good. Well, I still call you from out of town once in a while. Coach Billick is here. You can follow him out on Twitter. He will be, uh, what are you pimping in Las Vegas? Everybody pimping. See, this is why I did the charity thing, Coach. Because every, I've done 27 Super Bowls. Everybody would come by and they pimp product X, but they would also pimp charity Y, right? So I'm just doing this thing next Uh, week to say, we're just going to do charity Y and we'll figure out the, the pimping of the soup and the products and doing good things. But Radio Row is about, Giving sure. some information from some famous guy with a ring like you for a product, but also a cause. So what do you got going for me? Next I, I remember when Kevin Byrne and I first went to the Ravens and developed a close relationship with Kevin Byrne, our director of communications. And he said, you know, Brian, at the end of the day, the NFL is one thing. It sells stuff. That's all it really is, is you're selling stuff. You're selling the product. You're selling the time. You're selling the players. Um, and so you're right. Radio Row is just, I told you last week, it's this signal relief. It's a real deal. It's bad. In fact, I just got out of the pool. And so my shoulders and back is where I feel it, where I feel the fatigue and the, and the ache. I put this thing on and it, it literally blocks the pain. It blocks the electrical signals that allow you then to do the other things. It's called signal relief. You got to check this out. This is, it's reusable. Uh, it's very effective that way. You put it wherever you need it. Uh, this, this is pretty, I don't, I'm, I'm looking forward to to hawk in this thing next week at the Super Bowl. I know you are. I thought of you last week. Uh, I was in your favorite town out on the West Coast having some margaritas with uh, my dear friend Julio Bermejo. And we drove into the city from the West Side at night. And we went down into a hill and we came up and there was Coit Tower. And all I could think of is your love for your wife. And right. uh, so whenever I see Coit Tower, it triggers me to think about you and Kim Billick. How about that? Yeah, no chance. I quartered her in San Francisco when you've got the bridge and Coit Tower and there's Tower. Alcatraz over there, the yeah. lights. She had no chance. She had no chance but to, to, to say yes. All I could say is I came back, uh, you know, uh-huh. over the weekend. I spent a couple days last week out there and I came back and I said, it's still the most beautiful city in the it world. Is. Like it I is. just I can't get over how beautiful as long it is. As, you, as, as long as you see it from from thirty thousand feet. Don't get down onto the streets. It's just yeah. sad. Nah, you know, I, I know, but you 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 know Julio has a sign that says, if you love San Francisco, defend San Francisco. So um, there, there is a little bit of that. And, uh, you know, I would agree with you. American cities in general have a little ways to go. Uh, and I'm traveling around a little bit. They don't have a ways to go in Kansas City or, or in San Francisco right now or Santa Clara. They're in the Super Bowl. Coach Billick will be out in Las Vegas next week. We will be doing the Cup of Soup or Bowl. The Crab Cake Row Tour begins on Monday at Fadley's. Get all the information at a Baltimore Positive. All right, dude, you're off the clock. I'll bother you again next year when they're okay. zero and zero. Go hit the golf ball, ski do all that stuff we got baseball season here now 
You're of no use to me anymore. We'll, we'll call you back in football season. All right. Got it. All right. We man. have two seasons here now. We have a baseball team. It's amazing, Brian. They they won last year and stuff. It was good. Brian Billick is our friend, our head coach on behalf of the Living Classrooms Foundation. He is uh, resting comfortably out in Columbus, Ohio, and is off the clock and onto the skis very, very soon. We are WNSD, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking Baltimore positive. <laughs>